Hello and welcome to the podcast, Mosaic Art Behind the Scenes. I am your host, Carlos Gonzalez, and this is our eighth episode. Today's guest is an extraordinary muralist painter, historian of Mexican culture, and a fine art mosaic artist, and also a teacher for many upcoming muralist artists. He's originally from Mexico City, where he had the opportunity to work under the guidance of a master painter from Mexico named Arnold Belkin. That experience allowed him to follow a path to community murals from the te teachings of the Mexican School of Painting. He now resides in Portland, Oregon, where he received an MFA from the University of Oregon in 1999 in painting and a MIS in fine art education, with a bachelor in FA in addition to an undergraduate degree in social anthropology. In addition to work on mural, Mr. Hernandez has taught art history and culture of Mexico. Currently, Mr. Hernandez has been teaching mural painting at Portland State University and Chamiquitia Community College for the last 12 years and also has developed an exchange program with National School of Sculpture, engraving and painting La Esmeralda in Mexico City, painting murals with students from both universities. His medium in mosaics started a little later with making religious mosaics art like the Virgin Mary for the St. Mary High School in Berkeley, California. Ever since then, he has not stopped making them. So let me introduce you to a great friend of mine, Hector Hernandez. How are you, man? How's it going? Oh, pretty good. Thank you for having me and inviting me to your programs and to you um, and, and having me for this interview. No, no, I'm very happy. I mean, it's, it's a long time coming. You've been doing uh, a lot of murals for a long time from what I see since uh, way back when you when you lived in Mexico. So um, today I think that's what we should talk about. We should talk about like how how a muralist uh, painter um, started making or got its way to uh, mosaic. So so tell me first a little about you. Like how um, when did you come to the U.S. and and did you come for that specific idea of of being a painter? Uh, yes, well, one of my, uh, and my, my background, um, and I finished my program in social anthropology and in, in specific in ethnology. And when I was studying in, the, in my university in Mexico, uh, Universidad Metropolitana in Mexico City, I had the opportunity to work with Arnold Belkin as an assistant. And he introduced me to... Um, uh, mural painting and in particular uh, community murals. So that's why I was always uh, uh, interested on uh, pursuing that line of work in art, and that is uh, mural painting. And in terms of that experience also allowed me to um, uh, know more about the mural movement in the United States as well. So, but before I came to the United States, I went to Japan and I spent five years there. And so I still, my interest um, uh, was uh, focused on mural painting. And although I was not able to paint murals in, in Japan, but I was able to study Japanese culture and do some artwork as well in Japan, while I was in Japan. And finally, when I came to the United States, I was able to focus on my program in art. And then uh, when I was doing my program in art uh, at Oregon State University, I was um, I, I started receiving invitations to paint murals in the United States. So uh, because I have this background in the Mexican School of Painting through the teachings of uh, Arnold Belkin, that he was the disciple of Siqueiros, um, I, I start um, more immersed on the mural um, activities here in the United States. And that was about, you know, during the 90s, uh, late 90s. And then I continued during the 2000, um, re receiving commissions to work um, in mural paintings, in particular here in the Portland area, because I was... I know, because I went, I went to Portland and I saw, I, I visited you once. We did an installation together. I mean, we worked together before. And just so people who are listening to the podcast, we've, we've worked together before and he's he's... A great painter. He has all these murals. He does these beautiful murals of butterflies and this rich Mexican culture uh, murals all around the Portland area. And it's just amazing. When I went over there, I was very excited because I was able to go to his studio and he showed me how he exactly does that. And he just 
pulled this layer of this huge white cloth that I remember. And I, and I asked you, like, what is it? Like, how do you how do you paint that on there? And then you take that to the mural. And I don't know. It was just to me, it was a, like, a really nice experience for someone to come from a country and, and just make uh, a big profession. Um, what you've been doing as a, even a teacher at the Portland University as you are right now, and you do a lot of exhibitions and things. I'm just amazed on how how far you've gotten ever since uh, you you came from Mexico and and obviously all that experience from culture and art from being in Japan and and just being in the art community because when I was with you you took me around to like uh, galleries and, and you showed me um, different parts of Portland and, and everybody knew you I mean you you like you're like one of the the coolest guys in there in the art in the art world well. Um... Yeah, well, they know me uh, uh, at this point <laughs> around, you know, the <laughs> area. Well, or, you, or you do really, or, or or you do you give a good price for your murals? That's probably it, maybe. Right? Um, well, uh, <laughs> so sometimes I, um, that is not the case, but yeah, I try not to do it for free, but uh, depending on the situation, yeah, um, it's more about you know working with the communities. It's more about to work with. Uh, you know the, where the the communities are interested in working. So um, and yeah, I trying to have a, to bring you know the the ideas and the messages and the uh, the voices of the community when I'm working in these mural projects. And for me, that is what is most important. So that we can have a presence. So, so not not only as a Latino, so as I was Mexicans here in the United States, but also. Um, as a members of the community in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, when you help the community, um, whether it's Latin or African American or the white community, I think it's just any type of art that you place in a certain space that will just attract a sense of uh, togetherness of just just seeing something and just being being able to watch a little part of someone else's. Uh, culture and and kind of like the way that that where they're from you know like a little bit of history and it just kind of opens an eye i mean we live in a whole world so i think art is just what brings the best in in all of us and i think that's great that you've been doing those murals so so painting the murals is way different than making mosaics right so what was the difference what was the difference from transferring from painting a mural to making a mosaic mural well, I was always intrigued and also interested on in working with mosaics uh, because, uh, as you know, the National School of Painting um, and also the mural movement also um, to, um, use mosaics as a way to, you know, express, you know, uh, all these uh, strong messages that they have um, and walls and, and the mosaics. Uh, were part of one of the important uh, elements of the new of the new techniques that they were using, um, and bringing all this tradition of uh, from ancient times, um, uh, that is the, the the mosaic art, into the school of painting with the new materials with uh, new uh, messages. Um, it was also a key component. Um, I saw the mosaics of Siqueiros, for example, at the National University, the La Universidad Autónoma de Mexico, and yeah. that was one of the the most important, you know, I mean, one of one of the uh, most relevant uh, mosaics, um, and also some other mosaics that they did on stone and the uh, Estadio Olímpico, the Olympic Stadium, and and uh, University City, a la Ciudad Universitaria. Um, also, we have the murals, of mosaic murals of O'Gorman at the library in, um, in, in, in at the uh, at la Ciudad, uh, Ciudad Universitaria. So, yeah, for, for people, for let me interrupt you. For people who don't know Siqueiros, he he's a, he was a Mexican muralist at the level of Diego Rivera, for instance. A lot of people know Diego Rivera, but but just so so people are, who are listening, was was this huge muralist who's, who worked with mosaics like Hector is saying and um, in the university in uh, UNAM you know, it's the state basically university in Mexico City um, these buildings have huge mosaic coverings I mean they're just it, it seems like they're just it's 
it's actually the library um one of the biggest ones but they're all over mexico too so so you got some of that is that that's where you got some of that um intention of making mosaics in the future yes absolutely and uh and just like um, um the case of for example the development of you know the 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 fabrication of mosaics and smalti in mexico was basically um um uh, influenced you know by this uh movement of doing mosaics around so you know what the in, in what the factory that uh, you know that they are in, in cuernavaca and also siqueiros also was uh, located in, in cuernavaca with this uh, atelier but yeah the three uh, big ones uh, of the mexican mural movement were um siqueiros orozco and rivera and, and I was always intrigued and I was want to use the mosaics because also I saw the mosaics from ancient times, you know, from the Roman mosaics, from the uh, Byzantine mosaics. So I was always interested in doing that until I have the opportunity to work on my first mosaic project uh, for one housing development here in Portland. And they told me, oh, we like your work, but we'd like to see your work out if you can do something but in mosaic, not just something that is painted on the wall because you know at the end um the 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 lifespan of a mural painting is not that much it's like a 50 years or 25 years etc depending yeah. on the organization so but if you work on mosaics well they can last hundreds of years of course and that's why i was like oh, wow yeah this is a great opportunity for me to do something that lasts longer and uh, in 2009, I received my first commission for doing a large uh, mosaic mural that was the dimensions of like uh, five feet tall. That was around um, one meter and a half tall by, um, by uh, 20 feet long. That was pretty much around uh, 15 meters, no, less, less than 15 meters. Um, and that was the, the good opportunity for that. But also before that, I received a small, you know, commission to work in a small mosaic that it was just only for a monument sign at the entrance of a housing development. So that was. And you made that. You made the mosaic. You literally uh, had to learn how to make mosaics in that time. Yeah, or you, because you had you had you 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 saw them back then. But then you had to kind of get an idea of like, okay, something is. It's not just making a real like a small mosaic compared to making a mural um with a mosaic so so i'm sure you, you you were taught somewhere right yeah i was uh receiving some kind of guidance and they told me general information of as you do this 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 i was not familiar with tutorials on youtube because at that point in 2008 9 uh we didn't have that much of resources online so I have to get, you know, the advice from um, mosaicist, uh, a local mosaicist, how to do that. And um, and I was putting all this project, it was for me huge for a mosaic, but it was, I, I was comfortable working with those dimensions because I was paint, I, I've been painting murals. Uh, but I didn't realize, you know, the dimension and the, how labor uh, intensive is this kind of work so because um um th this is a totally new medium for me um and then um yeah. I, I enjoyed the experience i was immersed in that so i was working hours and hours and i forget a lot of time uh putting the, the pieces together and then i did the installation that was another teaching experience for me um the whole process of installation and um and they love it so and i like the, the experience and then i i start receiving uh, commissions to do other murals other mosaic murals um around the region yeah um well the, the iphone uh first iphone came out in 2007 so not that many you know uh, social media wasn't even around almost it was just i mean you had to look at books what had people had mm -hmm. and that's if you you went to your local um bookstore and, and try to get some mosaic books so exactly. i understand you how that wasn't a thing back then because when i went to school in italy uh we didn't even have internet and that was like 2001 over there you know so <laughs> it was just i don't know i don't know if it's better or worse i don't know what it is now but i think i like it even without internet these days but if not we wouldn't be able to do all these things so 
And you've done how many, how many murals have you done in general with mosaics? And um, I don't count them, unfortunately. You don't count them? <laughs> no, basically. And I know I you've done at least count. more than well, 10. You've done more than 10. Yeah, around that. So I've been doing several sizes. Yeah, probably. Um, uh, yeah, uh, in between, you know, monument signs, between, you know, uh, mosaic, uh, mural mosaics and large format, uh, uh, 40 feet by four, for example, is one of the largest ones that I've been doing. That is pretty much around uh, one, one meter and half almost uh, by um, uh, 20, uh, 25 feet and uh, 25 meters yeah it's uh and and still and, and now right now i'm working in two commissions as, as well so oh so you're doing one right now at this moment yeah I, I i'm working okay. in two, at least in two commissions uh for making uh doing mosaics okay one, so two. well that's that's good explain this how how you how do you go about a commission? Like, do you get invited to the commissions? Do do you have to present like a like a project? I'm sure, like regular RQs. You know how they have artist calls for public art and things like that. And I'm sure, do you present that information, or do they just do they know that you do them and they just invite you sometimes? No. Uh, for example, in this commission, the, currently I'm working for um, the Western Oregon University for the Welcome Center. Um, I apply for. Um, the FRQ, so yeah, uh, for call for artists that they have, and they have a program that is one for one percent, uh, yeah, and apply for that. So we went through a process of um, um, a selection, and they picked my work because they were interested on in what I was proposing, um, and um, and yeah, that's that is the case. But for example, in this other one. I was uh, contacted by a um, community organization, and they told me that a uh, neighborhood association, and they told me, oh, yeah, uh, we like your work, and we are interested uh, uh, if you can work with us to do a mosaic mural. Uh, again, the same dimensions, 40 feet by by four, that is approximately one, one, one meter and a half by, by 25, um, yeah, around 25 meters. Yeah, it's uh, long. Long. yeah, it's a long, it's, 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 a, it's a, a large project. But what I'm offering to the university, it was pretty much uh, m larger than that. So because there are oh. uh, this mosaic is for two, um, two build, uh, two sections of the, the of one building. So, and um, and then uh, in this uh, other mural that I was mentioning. I was contact and then they like my work and they offer me that. that opportunity. Yeah. So, so people who do mosaics now and work on mosaics, eventually someone will call you if you keep doing them long enough, right? Like hopefully if you do a good work and, and you are a good mosaic artist and, and you keep that work up, someone will notice around the area where you work and, and hopefully they will call you besides you keep doing all the, all the RFQs and all the petitions that people ask for to make public art around the area or in other states, but I just think that's really nice. I mean, and how do you do it? Do you work by yourself? Do you have other people uh, help you out when it's, when I mean, two commissions? I'm sure you have already people there that help you make mosaics, or is it like a community of mosaic artists get together and like, all right, how, how about uh, we all try to work on this and I'll just give you a certain percentage? Yeah, for example, in this case for Western Oregon University, I have to have like a several assistants. Oh yeah, because it's, uh, what I'm proposing for this university is to um, mount the mosaic first on panels of um, um, that is called a weedy panel or or this um, hydro block plan panel. Those are the commercial names, and then mount that on the wall. So I'm going to do two installations basically of the mosaic. So. Um, and for that, it requires a lot of work. So that is, that's why I need uh, assistance. So and currently I'm working with at least a couple of uh, assistants um, to work in this project. Um, the other thing is that um, on the case, for example, that you helped me uh, at one point to work in, in these other uh, projects uh, for the Grotto uh, for a Virgin of Guadalupe that I did. So. And in a couple of times, also you you work me. Uh, yeah, me that's a beautiful place. That's a beautiful place. Can you re can you tell me the name again where we went 
the Sanctuary of the Virgin Marys from around the world in Portland. It's from what I mean, when I went there, it's just like this. Uh, I don't know if it's it's I guess it's a it's a hill or mountain or how, how would you describe exactly? I, I would say it's just it's it's yeah, like a what a hill is, yeah, it's, in it's the middle hill, of Portland like, somewhere. Yeah, this they call Rocky Butte. That is not far from the uh, Columbia River um in the portland area and um, this hill or this butte uh what has us at the top it has this kind of garden that is very beautiful there's all this as uh, um uh full of trees and then um in this uh garden you just have this kind of like a promenade and you see different chapels um uh, dedicated to different virgins from around the world so so there are virgins from um uh, poland there are regions from vietnam there, there are regions from um uh, uh um Phil the philippines and also from um uh, from mexico countries. like the one yeah, you did. From mexico, and that was the last one that they didn't have you know an yeah. image of the virgin and they asked me the, also i was contacted by actually for another mosaic artist because uh uh, he knew that I knew about the culture, about, uh, you know, uh, the knowledge about uh, the historical um, uh, content of um, this imagery that it was required for them, the, this kind of projects, and also the skills that I have, you know, doing portraiture uh, on mosaics. So, um, and then later on, um, I received another invitation to do another version uh, because they like that one. And, and in Berkeley, California, and I was contacted, you know, by references. Yeah. Yeah. But, is that the one St. Mary's High School, Berkeley? That's yeah, the other Berkeley. Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. So you do you do not just murals, you do also religious mosaic uh, fine art. Yes, but they they got me to do, and I'm glad to do it uh, because um, because of the relevance, uh, the cultural relevance of uh, this. Um, these images so which i treat uh, with um, a lot of respect and and some kind of devotion as well even if i don't consider myself you know a religious person or a person that is um you know affiliated with you know the catholicism either so but um i do it gladly and um and i enjoy working in this kind of projects as well um but uh yeah my my focus is more working on murals that they are more in uh, related to uh, social messages and social issues and cultural um issues as well so that is basically my my focus um when that's I your do. strong that's a yeah. strong point and yeah. if you want to check out his website uh he has a website it's www.behance.net dash hector hh.com behance is b-e-h-a-n-c-e dot net dash hector hh.com he has uh all his work up there in that web page up uploaded so um check it out he does some amazing stuff he's he's a he's a renowned artist over there in portland all the way on the west coast on the top where all the pine trees are basically still left in the u.s right <laughs> um and uh just very the weather is always rainy but there's always cool people like you doing a lot of great things and and when i went there it's a beautiful city i love portland i love the people were very nice uh you were very nice too um and, and i like working with you you're you're an excellent type of guy man um i think uh, what what with with the mosaics that you do do you use a mosaic hammer or do you for these murals or do you use more like the nippers that are a little bit easier when you work with like industrial glass or what kind of glass do you also work with well for the large scale works like the you know the 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 most uh, the murals i usually work with uh yeah with um, the the venetian glass so so-called venetian glass or what they call in south america the venecitas uh-huh yeah and, uh, yeah, venecitas. yeah that and your last interview you know that i enjoy a lot yeah uh, they were describing the yeah, and i say oh yeah i use that exactly that kind of material <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, but of course I have my my materials of um, of smalti uh, for the Venetian projects, like uh, the Virgin ones. Yeah, um, all the small scale, 
it works. But it is it because there's more colors with the small T colors and you have a variation of the tones that you could use for like more specific detailed uh, artworks compared to the Venetian or uh, the ones that um, you use for big ones? Yes and no, because the thing is that uh, the challenge working with, uh, you know, the Venetian glass is that uh, depending on how it's made or depending on the quality, so it's very difficult to cut it. So, I mean, if it's like excellent quality, you have a very nice uh, clean cuts. And yeah. that's why I prefer using, you know, the, 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 the glass. Which uh, one's a bad quality for the people who are listening? What Which one would you not recommend? <laughs> Well, I don't want to be like a, you know, a chauvinist. You don't want to be the mean, the mean person. But a lot of people, I mean, mean. You'll, you'll save a lot of money for people. That's for sure. Well, well just, I guess you could say country. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. You, you don't have to say country. You could just say uh, just the ones that, 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 um, that they, they don't, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Well, I can say that, for example, you know, the best quality glass in the Venetian format is the one from mexico and the colorines mm -hmm. okay because we'll I, leave it at that we'll we'll put which one's the best one not the worst one no that is the best one yeah, yeah. so now the worst one is the cheap imports from asia <laughs> it, I, I, yeah what i wanted to say was the i guess the, the cheaper low cost ones are probably the worst ones i mean it doesn't matter where they come from it's just if it's come if if you see a price like four dollars for just a sheet and you see one for like 50 cents well there's there's a difference why it's 50 cents instead of four dollars right yeah because i mean it's almost i mean it's very difficult to do the cut now bisatsa so. makes you know that bisatsa is, is really nice and they're very uh perfectionist on their sheets but did you know that they actually when i went to italy not too long ago that bisatsa went the production went all the way to to india Mm -hmm. So, so they don't make them in Italy anymore, from what I what I heard. Well, that, so that's yeah. a shame, yeah. No surprise. So, but uh, hopefully we will have a good glass here in the United States too. So eventually, so I know that um, we will uh, hopefully we will have someone doing you know the Venetian, I mean the 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 Byzantine glass here. So this Malti. So yeah, yeah, okay. Malti or the Venetian is very hard. Like I don't, I mean. I don't know if there is a U.S. manufacturer specifically that sells like these Venetian pool glass tiles. I've mm -hmm. never, I've never heard of it. I mean, if if you know of one, let me know, or if someone, mm -hmm. someone who's listening to the podcast, let me know who actually makes these pool tiles who are actually made in the U.S. Because mm -hmm. it's it's a, you know, and I think they don't make them here just because of all the regulations and all. I mean, you, in order to make those types of glass, I mean, there's lead in them, you know, and and there's certain things that you you. The regulations can't permit it here in the U.S. Maybe that's the reason. I don't know. Yeah, and also the, most of the people are using, you know, stained glass instead of the Venetian glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, you are right by bullseye glass, aren't exactly. you? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they have problems, you know, with the regulations because they yeah, were that must be things. fun. You should. Do you ever think about doing a residence there? Um, not because usually what they use is uh, more for fused glass and also yeah. the kind of activities related to that. So that's why they are not that much into mosaics. And yeah. so um, when I ask them, so if they are really interested in doing something like a smalti, you know, like the Venetian, the Byzantine one, they say yeah. no, they, they are not interested. So, and then once in a while, I'm using yes, stained glass too, as well. Yeah. So, but, uh, but, that, but for you, I mean, for you to just go have fun, like relax, you know, like go and take a workshop of just, just watching all this class and just, just mm -hmm. playing around with all the stuff that they have. Do you ever think about that or not? You just want to. No, I've been doing that too. So I took yeah. the class on fused glass. Yeah. And yeah, it's fun. And I was working, you know, with glass and fusing and all that stuff. So then, but I feel at one point that I'm stretching myself too much in terms of, you know, using different techniques because also I do ceramics. Oh, so, you also do ceramics. Yeah, I'm doing ceramics that I I love to do that because uh, you know I do hand building on on rather than the wheel, and and then um, and I enjoy doing sculptural pieces uh, a lot. So and and that is also that um, I, I enjoy it a lot, and uh, but I feel that I'm stretching a little bit too much. So a lot of artists do that. We we stretch out a lot. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. I, and I've noticed in that now that I'm here in the U.S. In, in Mexico, I just it's a norm to just do everything because it's just 
you know, you have to, um, or, I mean, you could, you could have people do it for you. It's a lot cheaper over there, but you're always busy. You're always doing stuff in here. So you don't have someone that can help you out because you, you can't really afford to buy, pay everybody as much, you know, like, because it's not the same asking price of, of labor. Um, I just, you know, I feel like, uh, like I, I have to concentrate a little bit more on just a couple of things instead of just doing a lot of things. And a lot of artists, I'm sure it's like you, you know, or I do ceramics or I'm a painter or I'm a muralist or I fuse glass or, or I cook. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, I, I'm all over. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, yeah. uh, and of course I enjoy to do all that. So, because sometimes, you know, working yeah. sometimes in a studio and mosaics and you're isolated, you know, you are like in this kind of like almost uh, like a meditative state when you are working on mosaics that is super fun. But at one point after working several months or so, you like to switch gears and do something else. And then that's what I enjoy. So then I jump into the, you know, the, the, the fabric that I paint. And as you were mentioning at one point, so I, I use um, uh, parachute cloth to paint my murals. And then after I painting, painted those murals in, in, in my studio, I glue them on, 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 onto the wall, so I don't need to paint murals in front of the wall. So, and that is also super cool, so that I'm able to work in my studio and doing all these different projects. Mm -hmm. Because you have your studio in Portland, so people can come if they look at your website and, and and find the address. You have an actual studio that people can go and talk to you and check out your pieces of work, right? Yes, and I was point, I was thinking on having my studio more like a gallery with the display of my work there, but at this point it's impossible because I have so much commissions that I'm pretty much using all my space uh, for working on those commissions, especially those mosaics. Well, that's awesome. I'm happy for you. I'm happy that you got a lot of work. Is there is there a uh, is there like a Portland mosaic guild, kind of like in Austin or in or in Denver or? Or have you guys ever thought, like, you get together with, like, a bunch of mosaic artists there to, to start kind of have, like, a association so everybody can help each other out? Is there something like that, or is it kind of like everybody on their own? Yeah, pretty much it's like a, uh, everyone on their own, so working yeah. on their own. So, so because, well, there are the Northwest artists um, um, that they have that uh, group and, the, and pretty much on the area here. Uh, which I sometimes I post things there when I'm working. Uh, they have their group in in Washington, the state of Washington, next to here. Yeah. Um, and also um, they are artists uh, working in association. For example, you know the CMA too. Uh, yeah, CMA is was, awesome. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that uh, the initiative was from uh, you know Pam that was living before in Springfield. I mean in Eugene, Oregon. So yeah, yeah um, but uh, but besides that, so we don't have like an association per se here in Oregon, but we have uh, uh, many artists working in, in mosaic. So that sometimes we develop collaborations. Yes. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. That uh, I mean, I think making community, especially if you work in community projects and making community with other mosaic artists and just artists in general, it's, it's, it always helps out. Um, mm -hmm. It's always good to, it's, it, and, and you like to teach. I saw that you like uh, to teach also. So it's always good to teach people who are starting in this medium or, or just even the murals that you've, you've had experience with because you can always pass that experience to someone and, and they can completely just do new things with what you've taught them. So I think that's awesome that you also teach upcoming artists. Yeah, that is in, in Portland State University. I tend to do that in Jamaica Community College, but it was more difficult. They have like a, a lot of, you know, uh, prerequisites to take the class, et cetera, et cetera. And so the, um, I stopped insisting there at Chemeketa and still I'm working and developing collaborations with Chemeketa for other murals that I've been painting in the area. Um, but uh, the, the forum that they are giving me and also the the liberty that they are giving me at Portland State University to work in this uh, course is amazing, and I'm so grateful uh, to work uh, there. So I'm teaching there, so I, which I really enjoyed uh, teaching. Um, uh, I switched precisely the name of the class before it was focusing on mural painting, but I just switched into public art now, and the class yeah. is public art because of including mosaic. Um, oh, okay, and, nice. Mosaic, is there a uh, technique like uh talking about mosaics again before we leave in a little bit is there a specific technique that you use in making mosaic i mean there's there's a direct 
technique. There's an indirect. There's a double reverse technique. There's techniques that, you know, people use to make their own stuff. But do you use the specific one? What do you recommend for, like, a mural? Well, uh, for the murals, I usually uh, work with, you know, the direct technique. So, but now with, you know, the sticky mesh, that helped me a lot because um, I'm uh, taking advantage of the direct technique and I use the reverse a uh, little bit to, you know, to solve of the, some of the problems that I have to solve. But uh, yeah, uh, be, that, but that is thanks to the mesh, the sticky mesh. So you work on the mesh, you put have the design on the bottom, you have the mesh on top, and you work with the... Uh, este... Venetian glass uh -huh. on top. And Venetian glass or porcelain tile. Or porcelain tile. You, you do mix, mix yes, uh, materials exactly. on there. Usually I use the porcelain tile for backgrounds because I'm using the matte um, finishing of the finish of the of the of the of the porcelain tile yeah. and then the glassy and the, the glossy uh, finish of the of the glass uh, helps me to work on the main figures of the, the mural mm -hmm. and that is the direct technique that i'm using yeah well i think that's uh that's something that people who are listening will will, will like to uh use in the future or at least try to do a sample of it because some people when they start it's not the same thing making a uh regular small mosaic compared to a big mural mosaic so if you say um, working directly with the mesh that you could just glue on. Do you have? Do you recommend a brand that sells that mesh? I don't remember the brand, but it's the sticky mesh. So you, I mean, I. So if you look it over sticky mesh, you're, I'm sure uh, people can find it. Yeah, the on you know the, those um, distributors or those um, uh, retailers that they are that, um, specialized on mosaic artists. Yeah, there's a couple of websites, right? There's a couple of websites uh -huh. that you could, yeah. Yeah, and the, yeah, and that is um, yeah, that is basically what I've been working recently is with sticky mesh. So after working so many years with the regular uh, fiberglass mesh, mm -hmm. anything that you could recommend to a mosaic artist? Um, you and I have been doing it for a long time, but for people who are starting to make mosaics, what would you recommend with all uh, your experience that you have? Persistence, persistence, persistence. <laughs> so, <laughs> patience, 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 <laughs> patience, persistence, persistence, persistence. Yeah. And keep, you know, <laughs> keep doing, doing, doing. So, uh, yeah. um, I think as uh, mosaic art, uh, art is very complex, is very demanding. Um, what I um, have is this um, experience uh, that um, with mosaics that. Um, in one way, I feel that what helps me is that I have this background in painting, and sometimes I try to translate, you know, the the color quality that I have and my paintings into the mosaics. Uh, but um, and I, I basically, what I recommend is also to um, practice, you know, drawing and painting. So um, as a way to um, experiment with color and, yeah. uh, and also learn you know the basics of drawing so that also helps a lot um, uh, when you are doing your your, your when you trans, uh, you translate all those uh, experiences into the mosaic um, uh, medium mm -hmm. yeah a, a mosaic artist normally is a creator a uh, designer a mm -hmm. manufacturer a installer and a photographer, web designer, <laughs> you know, yeah. all those things. <laughs> all uh, <laughs> yeah, promoter, you know, like, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, what I re what I recommend is uh, just have a lot of friends that that uh, make a lot of friends in the mosaic community and 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 just get help from. I mean, mosaic artists from around the U.S. and around the world are very friendly, and and they will definitely just if you ask if can I help. Um, can you help me with uh, with this with this thing that I have? It just it's it's not it's not getting done. Or I have a question. Before you even try to get into something that you don't know, I'm sure a lot of mosaic artists will definitely help out. And you know, yeah, after 20 absolutely. years and you after all these years, you have a lot of friends. And you've been to Sama and I've been to Sama and we've done we've been to Italy and Europe and stuff. So it's mm -hmm. just I would just I would just yeah I would do that. I would um, join a community in that that where they make mosaics and just just get to know people that make mosaics so they can help you out 
I'm going to say a couple of words to you, and then you have to tell me right off the bat, without thinking, um, what what comes up in your mind as I say these, these couple of words, right? It's a little game that I've been playing with a couple of people that oh, okay. have been on this uh, podcast. Mm -hmm. So are you ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Mape or Latticrete? Latticrete. <laughs> Hammer or tweezers? Um, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, nippers. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you chose one, huh? <laughs> well, I, mean, I, can, I can go with the ball, depending on for example, we were talking Depends about how mad tea. you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, a small tea or Venetian glass? Uh, a small tea. Okay. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that with small T. That way, uh, yeah, I think it's it's it, it's good. Yeah, well, the tweezers are good. The, I mean, not the, the the nippers are really good to work with. So, uh, it yeah. just it just it just something that the listeners can just have a little fun while they're listening to us. But you know, they, when when I was working with very bad quality glass, um, yeah, the, the 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 solution was working with a hammer. Because yeah. the nippers are not good enough, I mean, for working with that bad quality. So then I was able to work um, and to get the cuts with a hammer and bad, bad, bad quality um, glass. So I feel that the mm -hmm. yeah, I feel that the nippers are very good with thin glass and that are a little bit bigger than your uh, pieces that are sold in small tea. Small tea pieces, small ones, are pretty good to cut with uh, with the hammer. But when you get more bigger size, the hammer normally will shatter and won't cut it the way you want it to. If it's more than like what, maybe over an, an inch and a half by an mm -hmm. inch and a half. If they're a little bit bigger pieces than that, the, the hammer, it only has a certain width. And, and the hardy, when you hit it, it makes it go sideways once you do that cut. And, it, and you, you don't want to waste material. So so the nippers, it's a lot easier when it's thinner. It's a little big piece. So you just put in the hat, cut in the half and then half of that. And then you could use that for the hammer. That's mm -hmm. what you know most people do sometimes if they don't have that Venetian glass. They just use yeah. other types, mm -hmm. like stained glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so, so uh, that I, I try to use as much as possible the hammer, but I mean, but this practical use in the nippers. Yeah. So, are you gonna? Um, well, hopefully, you can put all these new commissions up and send it to us. And then I'm going to try to have uh, on this YouTube channel, if you guys want to look at it, I'm going to put all the, the stuff that um, the mosaic artwork that Hector has been talking about. And I'm going to put it on that video and you can check it out. And uh, people who are listening to us, check out his website. And I'm sure on the website, once he's done with these last two commissions, check them out. I've seen the pictures of what he's making and I'm not going to say anything about them because I already know, but they're definitely beautiful. He's actually mixing a little bit of picking with mosaics. I'm just, I'm just a little telling you a little bit about it, but uh, uh, it's, they're, they're very nice. I, I couldn't hear very well because it was cut it. So the the your, your oh the audio, audio. yeah the audio. Oh <laughs> no, I said I was just I'm just gonna say a little bit about your commissions once you upload them on your webpage. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm saying that it's it's you've been you're gonna use a little bit of painting and mosaics so people can look at your website once you're finished. So that's. It's just a little bit of uh, a, a VIP, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? A VIP, uh, a little bit so they can they can more or less see what they're going to look like. But, you know, that's what I said earlier. Oh, you know, okay. I can edit I can edit the audio anyway, so uh, we can keep talking. And then just how we do it normally, you know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so don't worry. So, but hey, uh, I think we've talked a lot. Like we definitely have to do a Spanish because uh, it's it'd probably be maybe easier for you and me at the same time since that's mm -hmm. our uh, original language. But um, mm -hmm. I want to thank you for being in this podcast, taking no, your no, time, no. especially way over there in Portland, and and telling us a little bit about what is work, how is working with the mural um, in painting and mosaics, and hopefully. Um, you can come back and give us more specifics on exactly um, what it is to apply for a mural 
that way people will know what to do since you you're already teaching a class like that okay is that no, good yeah. yeah absolutely yeah so then i'd like to add also that i will be participating in an event uh, at the portland art museum uh, for uh, the exhibition of frida this coming um uh, february so and um and hopefully i mean uh, well i will keep you informed about that so and then i will paint a mural uh, during the exhibition when oh when they, nice so, that's awesome yeah, and, and the, at the lobby of the of the art museum oh and wow so, do you have a date for that yeah the uh, tentatively we are thinking of uh, march the second when we yeah. start like a uh, painting in front of people and so and that was inspired well if you're in that area if you're in that area in Portland and you're nearby, I, I would recommend you go and, and hang out with Hector and, and see what he does in a physical presence, even though Omicron is going wild. But uh, I don't know. I'm sure if you wear your face mask, nothing will happen to you, right? No, yeah. They, they will have all this uh, security measurements. So the, but yeah, so then uh, something that uh, we are doing, so pain in front and people will be uh, able to see what's uh, the mural process uh, How's the mirror process taking place? Um, and they will have this kind of life experience, not only about the display of the works of Frida and the Mexican muralist and the yeah. Mexican modernism. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Well, I think it was a pleasure. I don't know about you. Maybe you don't want to ever oh. talk to me again after today. <laughs> no, absolutely. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> you know, I can't wait to go back to Portland and, and, and hang out with you and just, you know, yeah. If you want me yeah. to install something again, I'll definitely go over there and check some things out. And, you know, I don't think I've ever stopped drinking kombucha after I, I went to Portland. <laughs> yeah, it's thanks one of those, those habits that you ended up having. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks to Tim, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, man. So okay. uh, it, was very, it was very awesome. You're a good friend of mine. And uh, thank you for doing this podcast. And I'll talk to you soon, man. You know, thank you Sounds very good? much for having me. And, um, and I really enjoyed the, the, this this uh, opportunity of having this interview. Okay. No, thank you, thank you, okay. my muralist, painter, mosaic artist, uh, Mexican native. All right, I'll see you soon, okay. man. Have okay. a good one. Thank you very much. We'll Bye. Bye. Ya quedó en la historia uno de los este, podcasts. Yo lo arreglo en el sonido, no te preocupes. Yo arreglo y edito en unas cosas, cosas que, por ejemplo, nos instalamos o que no escuchabas. Ajá. Ya, yo le sigo y lo corto y lo, y lo, lo aventamos, ¿no? A lo sí. nuevo este. Para que, para que no sea tan largo. Este, sí, te voy a mandar, te, te voy a mandar por, este, por email los, las imágenes porque van a ser grandes. Sí. Y este, incluso si quieres... Eh, si está bien, te mando algunas imágenes de algunos murales, pero claro, la sí. mayoría van a ser de mosaicos, ¿no? De los que, de los sí, que lo que sabes ¿no? que sí necesito, sabes que sí necesito de tu parte, es una foto de lo que quieras que ponga en el cover del episodio. Ah, ok. ¿No? Sí, pues de uno de los de murales, tal vez. Uh -huh. Sí, puede ser, yo lo que recomiendo, puede ser algo de una obra tuya de arte, o una foto tuya de un perfil de ti, ¿no? Como este uh -huh. artista. Este, pero bueno, ahora sí que, como tú veas, amigo, ya, ya de, depende de cómo quisieras hacerlo, ¿no? Sí. Yo te recomiendo esas dos, pero me puedes mandar lo que tú quieras, ya, si ahí vemos, pues ya. O lo, lo, sí, sí, luego sí. a veces agarro una foto de Facebook, por ejemplo, ¿no? pero bueno, bueno. Mejor tú mándame una que te guste a ti y así ya la tenemos, y para que se promueva, ¿no? Lo que haces. Sí, un ego pues es el chiste. Sí, es el chiste del podcast, ¿no? Que se promuevan los artistas y que se den a conocer y que pues, después de unos 100, ¿no? O, o no sé cuántos vaya a ser, este, pues, que ya nos empiecen a pagar para lo, unas empresas para dar publicidad. ¿no? Pues sí, también. Pues ojalá, pues, porque por eso estaba mencionando de los, de los smalkis, que quién produce smalkis aquí, ¿no? <ríe> para que saque, sí. hubiera sacado tu comercial, mano. <ríe> sí, 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 lo iba a sacar, pero ya cuando lo tenga todo listo, este, está bien, fíjate, pues ahorita esto lo hago gratis, es como mi diversión para relajarme, 
De hecho, ahorita tengo otro a las 10, de hecho, con ¿Otro? Diane. Sí, tengo otro. Voy a ir con todo este año para ya tener un buen... Este, no, sí, pero, ya, ya estás estableciéndote ya. Pues ahí vamos, ahí vamos poco. Fíjate que se me ha ido bien. Ya estoy haciendo unos Earth Cues aquí también en Carolina del Norte. Uh -huh. Y este, pues, si Dios quiere, pues me va, a ir, me va a ir muy bien, ¿no? Y obviamente, pues hay que... Yo, yo, quiero, yo quiero llevar a mi familia ya contigo a Portland a conocer. Este, sí. Ojalá sea la oportunidad en un futuro. Y, pero bueno, mientras tanto cuentas como amistad y hay que platicar, aunque no sea el podcast pues hay que platicar más frecuente ya que estamos aquí ya no voy a regresar a México un rato, está muy feo la verdad, no sé si tuviste pues pero sí, este... ahorita sí ahorita está este bueno, yo fui, muy... ¿no? Hace, hace estuve ahí, ¿no? pero acabas de regresar tú también, ¿no? sí, acabo de regresar, pero sí, yo me voy a quedar aquí un rato yo creo que ya no voy a regresar, por... digo, mis papás viven acá, ¿no? no tengo por qué regresar ah, pues, okay. la familia de mi esposa, pero bueno este, sí. si no nos vemos la, su familia los vemos en otro lado te mando un abrazo amigo gusto platicar no, contigo y hay que hacer otro que... y si no fíjate que hay que hacer otro en español y si fluye más español subo de español hacemos uno mañana te parece no está bien está bien lo que pasa es que sí este claro o sea para mí es más natural hablar en español no este, en yo creo que sabes también... que po... sí yo creo que sabes que puede ser hasta interesante el español también hay que hacer sí. los dos porque lo que me gustaría es de que muchas veces el problema es de que sí nos desconectamos de Latinoamérica mucho. Y, sí. y, y ya los, es que la neta, yo cuando me decían, cuando yo estaba yo en Japón y estábamos con los estudiantes latinoamericanos, me decían, no, es que ustedes son ya gringos. Y yo decía, ¿cómo, ¿cómo se atreven a decir eso, no? Ajá. Pues ahora veo que sí. <risa> ahora entiendo por qué nos dicen eso. Sí, claro. Porque estamos totalmente desconectados, entonces sí sería bueno hacerlo en español, ¿no? Para... Sí, es que es español y, y mira, y si no, pues luego, ya este, este hay que tomarlo también como práctica también, ¿no? Para, y uh -huh. hacemos el, el español, yo veo cuál sale mejor y sacamos el que sea mejor de los dos, digo, no por ser uno o el otro, el que salga mejor, que fluya más, ese, porque hay que sacar el mejor de, los, de nosotros, ¿no? No uh -huh. tanto por si es inglés o español, sino si, si nos sale mejor en español, pues hay que hacerlo en español. No, pero, pero saca los dos para tener las dos versiones, para que el, el público gringo lo vea también, ¿no? Sí, sí, sí. Porque, porque la cosa está es de que nosotros necesitamos tener presencia en Estados Unidos. Y, sí, sí, sí. Y, y, y somos la minoría más grande en Estados Unidos y, no ten, y tenemos muy poco impacto. O sea, o sea tenemos mucha, eh, no diría poco impacto, tenemos mucho impacto pero siempre somos los invisibles. Siempre somos sí, los invisibles. Sí, 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 sí. Y eso me, no, y... me, me, me encabrona, te, ¿no? Te enoja. Porque, sí, porque eso es lo que yo estoy luchando aquí en Portland, ¿no? O sea, sí voy a hacer mi teatrito con Frida, ¿no? Vaya, gracias, finalmente, ¿no? Estoy muy agradecido al Museo de Arte, ¿no? De, de Portland. Pero cuando yo estoy haciendo una propuesta de mural para la, para la Universidad de Portland, eh, los morenos estaban, este, ¿cómo se llama? Con las baterías bien puestas, ¿no? Para cuestionar, ¿no? Y ah, dice, bueno, sí, sí. Pues, este, pues es obvio, ¿no? Porque ellos tienen muchísima presencia, ¿no? Este, claro. Y a, a pesar de que no son tantos, ¿no? Eh, aquí en, el, en, en, en Oregon. Sí, este, ¿no? Pero aquí hay más. Con, aquí en Carolina del Norte hay más. Sí, ahí sí, en esas áreas sí, ¿no? Y en el sur hay mucho, ¿no? Pero aquí no, pero ellos tienen muchísimo más presencia, son más visibles aquí en, sí. en Oregon que nosotros, a pesar de que tenemos tanto impacto y somos la minoría más grande. Y por eso estoy luchando. Y ahora, a nivel nacional, tenemos que hacer lo mismo, ¿no? Para tener ese, ese, ese impacto, ¿no? Por eso, este, ojalá que esto lo vean este, los gringos, ¿no? Sobre todo, ¿no? Sí. Pero también claro. tener el, ¿cómo se llama? El, 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 el otro en español. Hacemos para, los dos. No te preocupes. Para, hacemos los dos. Para este, ¿cómo se llama? Sí, para, para llegar a, a Latinoamérica y, y ojalá este, lo que estamos haciendo... A, este sirva de, sirva de algo, ¿no? O sea, si, si puede servirles de algo, pues excelente, ¿no? No, seguramente servirá de algo, amigo, ¿no? Te mando un abrazo porque ya voy a empezar el otro y le tengo que mandar el Órale. link a, a la otra artista. Estamos en contacto, entonces. Gracias sí, por no, hacerlo sí. y nos vemos pronto. Ahí me vas mandando no, fotos de lo que está haciendo. ¿Sale? Sí, sí, y este, y, y ya está.